Hello, my name is Patricia Contreras Tejada, and I'm going to be presenting some joint work with Carlos Palazuelos and Julio de Vicente. But before I do that, let me thank the organizers for putting on such a big conference two years in a row and under the, these conditions. I'm sure it's not easy. So thank you. Um, the title of this talk is Genuine Multipartite Non Locality is Intrinsic to Pure State Quantum Networks. And the title comes from the paper we published in Physical Review Letters earlier this year. The pure state thing is an added um, tag that we put because that later we tend to consider mixed state quantum networks and found some quite interesting and deferring behavior that we've uploaded to archive very recently. So I'm going to be presenting the results from the paper first, and that will be the main part of the talk. And towards the end, I'll turn to some extension into mixed state. Okay, so the first thing we're going to consider are probability distributions. That's going to be the main focus of this talk. And as you're probably used to, they'll contain inputs x fralis y for Bob and outputs a fralis b for Bob, forming a p of a b given x y. And if the only thing that correlates Alice and Bob is some hidden variable lambda, that's a, a classical uh, random variable, then the distribution p will be said to be local. That means that we can write it as a P of A, where um, Alice's output A only depends on her input X and lambda, and PB of B, Bob's output, only depending on Y and lambda, and then we average over lambda. So this is a P that's local, and otherwise it's non-local. We are interested in non-local probability distributions because they allow us, for example, to send messages in a cheaper and faster way because we need fewer bits or less use of the cable, whatever it is, as well as many other applications that I'm sure you're all aware of. But the long and short of it is that we want non-local probability distributions. And since they're so useful, we might ask, how do we generate these? Well, naturally with a quantum state. We say that a probability distribution P is quantum if uh, we can write it as the trace of some POVMs, E tensor F, E for Alice, F for Bob, with a quantum state rho. And rho itself, we'll attribute the non-locality property to rho if there exist measurements that can generate a non-local distribution P via this method. Otherwise, so if no matter what measurements I get, I can only ever generate local distributions P out of my state, then my state rho is local. Okay. We also know that if rho is non-local, then for sure it is entangled. So non-locality implies entanglement. However, this doesn't go the other way around. There are states such as this one here, which is an isotropic state, namely a mixture of the maximally entangled state and the normalized identity. This uh, weight P has some big range of values such that the state row is entangled, but it is local. Okay, so not, uh, entanglement doesn't always imply non-locality, but sometimes it does. For example, for pure states, that's Jezant's theorem. If I have a pure entangled state, then for sure it is non-local. Okay, what about the genuine multipartite case? Well, again, we have that genuine multipartite non locality implies genuine multipartite entanglement, but not the other way around. We don't know whether pure genuine multipartite entangled states are always genuine multipartite non local. That would be the multipartite extension of Jusant's theorem, and it's an open question, been open for a while now. The only thing we do know is that pure genuine multipartite entangled states are never fully local, so they, they always contain some amount of non locality. Okay, so what's this fully local genuine multipartite business? Let's uh, get some definitions. So what counts as multipartite is anything, roughly speaking, that correlates all parties, not just a subset. So let's be a little bit more precise. This distribution that is a P of A times a P of B times a P of C, correlated only by the same hidden variable lambda we had before, this is called fully local. Because again, the only thing that correlates A, B, and C is some classical random variable that's fully local. What if we have a P of AB that joins Alice and Bob, but Charlie is sitting here correlated only by lambda with AB? Then we say that this is bilocal. And two minor details here. One is that bilocal has other meanings in the literature. 
So I'll be using it to mean this, although don't assume that what I already see by local, this is what they mean. Um, and also, we often assume that the P of AB here is non-signaling. This means that Alice and Bob can't send messages to each other faster than the speed of light. And this we assume for mostly physical reasons that make the definition a bit more appealing and consistent with other stuff. There's a whole literature on it, which I won't get into right now. OK, so this is by local if it's local in AB versus C. But any convex combination of these things, and by the way, the convex combination might be across different partitions, is also by local. So P is by local if it can be written as something in AB versus C, plus something in AC versus B, plus something in A versus BC. OK, this extends naturally to N parties. I've put it for three just for the sake of illustration. Um, if you take any bipartition, so something's by local, if you can write it as a convex combination of something local across different bipartitions. And anything that's not by local is genuine multipartite non local. And these are the correlations that we are interested in because they are behind a lot of applications. It's uh, basically the strongest form of non locality that you can induce in this paradigm, at least. And this is what we're interested in, in extracting. On our multipartite states. And in particular, we're going to be focusing on quantum networks. Quantum network is something like this picture here, where pairs of parties share states, entangled states, hopefully. Otherwise, it's all a bit trivial. And one particular party might be entangled to one or more of the others. Okay. So generally speaking, this is a quantum network. And what we're going to try and do is uh, try and extract genuine multipartite non locality from this kind of setup here. If we, if we succeed, that will be interesting because this is, of course, a much easier or uh, simpler way of connecting and entangling people than if you need something like a GHZ state between three parties or a multipartite whatever state between all of them, right? So let's try. Let's see how far we get. The thing is, first, we need to know how can we detect non locality. And there's a piece of good news, which is that local distributions form a polytope, that is a convex set with planar faces. In two dimensions, this, that would be this polygon here. This is actually higher dimensional, but whatever. The highlight of it being a polytope is that we can find inequalities, such as this line or a hyperplane here, that are satisfied by all local distributions. So that if I find one of those inequalities, and then I find a distribution that violates the inequality, so a point that sits on the other side of this hyperplane, then it must be non-local. So I'll have proven that the distribution I gave you is non-local. The same structure holds for bilocality. So if I have a bilocal distribution, essentially what I have is a polytope here, because this is bipartite local, if I take A and B as one big fat party, and then another polytope here and another polytope here. But if I take complex combinations, I preserve the polytope structure. So again, I can use the same strategy. I find myself an inequality that's satisfied by all by local distributions. And then if, if I find that my distribution violates that inequality, then it must be genuine multipartite non-local. And we use this techniques to establish the following two results. We succeed in our endeavor. We find that all networks of bipartite pure entangled states are genuine multipartite non local. And as an application of this result, we find that all pure genuine multipartite entangled states are genuine multipartite non local, as long as I'm allowed to take finitely many copies. So this is not exactly the multipartite extension of Rizan's theorem because that one didn't contemplate the uh, obtention of many copies. But well, hopefully it's a step in the right direction. Hopefully this points to some kind of non locality contained in these genuine multipartite entangled states. OK, so let's get to the first result. Rigorously, the theorem states that any connected network of bipartite per entangled states is genuine multipartite non local. Importantly, this is independent of the topology of the network. So, for example, I could change the placement of these arrows such that the network would still be connected. Or possibly I could add a few arrows. Or possibly I could make a star network here or whatever network I fancy, right? And independently of that, my network would still be genuine multipartite non local. And it's also independent of the amount of entanglement shared between the parties. It doesn't matter that these are the maximally entangled state 
or that one or more of them are hardly entangled at all, they only contain an infinitely small amount of entanglement, still the, the theorem holds, as long as these states are pure and they're entangled. And aside from this being appealing for application somehow, which, okay, the states need to be pure, so that's kind of a big, big drawback, but still, we think that this points to a very deep property of quantum networks, because it's quite interesting that we can extract this genuine multipartite in the locality, no matter the topology of the network and the amount of entanglement share. How did we prove this result? Well, as I hinted before, we used inequalities. We combined these bipartite inequalities that would detect each of the states in the network. These are Bell inequalities, by the way. Um, and we combined them in order to obtain a big inequality that would be satisfied by all bilocal distributions. And then we proved that the network, independently of the topology of the mountain entanglement, uh, violates the, the inequality. Then there's a technical detail about whether or not these states are maximally entangled or not, but those are technicalities that you can find in the paper. Um, for now, the, the upshot is that the theorem holds for all topologies in the mountain entanglement. Okay, so that's our first result. Now let's apply it. To, to see that all pure genuine multipartite entangled states are genuine multipartite and local by taking finitely many copies. More rigorously, if I have psi being a genuine multipartite entangled state of n parties, then n minus one copies of it suffice to obtain genuine multipartite and locality. Again, I'm going to illustrate the thing with three parties, and you can find the full n partite proof of the paper. So the interesting thing about genuine multipartite entangled states is that. Um, Charlie here, for example, any party, say Charlie, can measure in a particular way so as to leave Alice and Bob with a pure bipartite entangled state. Okay, so if Charlie can do this here, maybe Bob can do the same over here, right? Because it's three parties, we only need two copies of the state. And then if they measure in the way that I explained, they will arrive at this kind of structure over here where Alice and Bob share a bipartite entangled state and Alice and Charlie share a bipartite entangled state of both are pure. But now we can rearrange the picture here so that we see that Alice holds two particles and she's entangled to Bob here, who also holds two particles, just this one sitting here doing nothing. And same here for Charlie. He has one extra particle doing nothing, but the other one's entangled to Alice. But now we just have too many people in the picture, frankly. We can just simplify and see that what this is essentially is a network like the one we had before, a network of bipartite pure entangled state. And thus we arrive at the theorem that says that any genuine multipartite entangled state in CD tensor N is such that N minus one copies of it is genuine multipartite non-local. So you see, we use the result about networks to deduce something about genuine multipartite entangled states. Okay, so that's our two results. Those are the main results that we published in the, in the PRL. And the next obvious question that you might have been thinking about all along is, yes, pure states are very nice and very simple and very easy, but what about mixed states? I want applications. I want this to be doable in real life. Okay, well, I have good news for you, which is that by continuity, our results are somewhat robust. However, we don't know how robust they are. And especially in general, the bad news is that not even genuine multipartite entanglement is guaranteed. Okay, so what's genuine multipartite entanglement? Let's uh, review the definitions that are exactly the same as for non-locality, just for quantum states this time. This is fairly separable because it's a tensor product of something in A, something in B, and something in C. This is bi-separable, bi sorry, if, um, if I have something in A, B, tensor C, and again, this extends by convex combinations. Um, if P, Q, and R sum to one, then I have something in A, B, tensor C, plus something in A, C, tensor B, plus something in A, tensor B, C. This is bi-separable. And all else is genuine multipartite entangled. Okay, so these are our results. We have some examples of pair entangled networks that are biseparable. So some examples of these networks, where in spite of the states containing entanglement, the whole network is biseparable. We also have that in general, tree graphs become biseparable. Tree graphs are those networks that uh, this is graph theory um, terminology, but it's very simple. It just means that the network is connected, but just about. It doesn't have any extra edges, has the minimal amount of edges such that it's still connected. 
And at the other end of the spectrum, a completely connected graph, a complete graph, is always genuine multiparted entangled, as long as the visibility is good enough. Um, I didn't point this out, but of course we focus on entanglement for these networks because it's not even guaranteed, whereas for pure state it was, right? So we're going to focus in particular on isotropic states. And isotropic states are the ones that I showed before, which are a mixture, a convex mixture, of the maximally entangled state and the normalized identity. And the weight P on the maximally entangled state would the visibility. And these states are quite nice because, well, they're symmetric under certain unitaries, so they're quite kind of easy to work with. But also they're quite a standard noise model because it's just the maximally entangled state, the supposedly best state you could ever have, mixed with white noise. And they're particularly convenient because it turns out that any state that's sufficiently entangled can be transformed by LOCC into one of these, into an isotropic state. So whatever we prove for isotropic states will actually turn out to apply for a much larger class of states. In fact, for two qubits, all entangled states can be transformed into isotropic states. So whatever I say next, for two qubits at least, will apply to all entangled states. So here we go. Let's start simple with some tripartite networks of isotropic states. For example, here Alice is entangled to Bob and entangled to Charlie, like we had before. And it turns out that this is biseparable for P, the visibility, lower than or equal to something 0.547. Okay. And this is general multiplied entanglement for P above 0.577. Okay, these numbers don't mean a lot so far. But what happens if we add an extra edge between Bob and Charlie? Well, then, as you can see, the numbers are dramatically lower because this is biseparable for P lower than or equal to 0.429 and generally multiparted entangled for P higher than 0.491. Okay, so if I have an isotropic state with visibility, say a half, not 0.5, then I can really see the effect of the topology here, right? Because if I have all three edges, then I am able to obtain GME, generally multiparted entanglement. However, if I lack this edge between Bob and Charlie, then I'm always biseparable. So now the amount of noise contained in the state matters, and the amount, the topology of the network also matters. And by the way, isotropic states are entangled for P above a third. So we already have quite a wide range of values for which, in spite of the states being entangled, the whole network is biseparable. Okay. Then we turn our attention to large networks of isotropic states. Large meaning that we don't put a bound on the number of parties that, um, that build the network. So suppose we have a tree network. So as I said, the tree network is the least connected out of the connected networks. A star network like the one depicted here is just an example. We could also substitute say this edge and put it here, whatever you want, it would still be a tree network. And all of these networks are biseparable no matter the amount of noise, as long as the state is not pure, as the number of parties grows. This is quite an extreme behavior because suppose that I have a very powerful central lab that distributes bipartite entanglement to less, powers, to less powerful labs in the periphery here. This you would think might be quite a realistic situation, but I'm sorry, it won't work because any experimental realization of a state will have some amount of noise, no matter how good you are as an experimentalist. And if you want your network to be large enough, then this is going to become biseparable. And thus you'll never get general multi-pattern or locality, for example, out of it. Okay, so what happens at the other end of the spectrum? We have a completely connected network here where every pair of parties shares a bipartite entangled state. So it turns out, that we do recover genuine multi-padded entanglement from here. As long as my states have a good enough visibility, something above this P0, which without making much effort to optimize, we calculated like 0.8 or something. Um, for any number of parties, as long as the visibility is good enough, I get genuine multi-padded entanglement. This is good. This means that not everything goes out the window. We do have hopes of getting genuine multi-padded effects out of quantum networks. Um, and of course, these are the two extremes, right? Next, it would be nice to know how many of these edges can I remove or how many edges do I need to add here to get genuine multi-parted entanglement? Possibly depending on the noise of the states. But anyway, what is the network with the lowest connectivity that displays genuine multi-parted entanglement? 
We would also like to know what happens in this completely connected network, but for non-locality. We know now that it's genuine multi-party entangled, great, but what about the non-locality? Does it also persist or is it washed out as the number of parties grows? And finally, there's a very interesting line of research um, that is about distinguishing what can be produced in a network from what can't. And they have a notion of genuine network entanglement that basically says this is not genuine network entanglement and whatever can't be uh, written like uh, um, tensor product of bipartite states like this uh, is. And we wonder whether there's a definition of genuine network non-locality that might detect it. We know for sure that genuine multi-partite non-locality, the one we've been using here, is not it because we've been able to get it from this network thing. Um, but you know, what? How can we define it? That's an active line of research which I am not a part of, but I know for a fact that there's, there's papers coming out on the archive every so often about that. So it's, I, I recommend you to follow that. So okay, just to finish off, we've seen that genuine multi-partite entanglement is intrinsic. Sorry, non-locality even is intrinsic to pure state quantum networks. We've seen that for uh, bipartite entanglement, we can get general multipartite non-locality. We've also seen that we can get it from copies of multipartite entanglement via the network. And this is in physical review letters, if you want to read it. And we've also seen that genuine multipartite entanglement in mixed state networks highly depends on the topology. So tree networks become inseparable, whereas completely connected networks uh, um, we have a general multipartite entanglement persisting, and that's on the other. Thank you very much, and I look forward to your questions.